All right, folks, welcome to another entertainment edition. Another entertainment edition with Rosangel Perez. Thank you for joining me, Rosangel. Um, these are fun to do because it gets my mind out of the war and all the stuff that we're going through. Kind of puts it somewhere else to where I can focus on not really happy things, but I find it entertaining the the downward slide into the sludge of degeneration, the, the degenerating disease of America, which is like the whole wokeism and, and the entire movement of the Hawk to a girl, the internet fame that she's created on the, on the, on the internet. Now her 15 minutes of fame. I mean, this has just gotten to the point where how can you not cover it? It's a reflection of our society. It's a reflection of humanity of our species where we're at right now. Thanks for joining me once again. Hey, um, thank you for uh, having me. Welcome. I'm welcome. <laughs> I'm always used to welcoming people to my podcast. Um, it's good to be back with um, your community. I have to tell you that never in my wildest dreams that I think that I would be covering the Hawk Tour girl because whenever she came into my awareness, I was literally turned off. And for the sake of just wokeism and trending and what catches people's eye, but we have to cover it. No, we have to, because it's a total reflection of where we're at, where America's mm -hmm. society is at right now. And just in the last four years, really, like this has gotten so, so bad. But first, folks, first, get your three harmful foods dot com for slash Nino. We live in the most advanced era in human history. And so we think <laughs> there have never been more <laughs> medical breakthroughs than there are right now. So why are millions of Americans more unhealthy and overweight than ever before? Well, According to U.S. board-certified physician and expert nutritionist, Dr. Amy Lee, one of the main reasons is three harmful foods that are being passed off as health foods all over the country. And wait till you hear this, folks. Because these foods can cause weight gain, clog your digestive tract, deplete your energy, and wreck your skin. They are banned in other countries, but not here. You can get them here in America real easy. Yet, shockingly, they're still legal in the U.S., and it's time someone shined a light on what they are. Dr. Amy Lee does just that while explaining how the side effects from these foods are wreaking havoc on your health and millions of other Americans. The great news is it's easy to stop and reverse this damage simply by learning which foods to avoid and how to spot them. And by doing so, you can experience easier weight loss, smooth, smooth digestion, and vibrant energy, folks. To find out these three fake foods, go to 3harmfulfoods.com forward slash Nino. That's number 3, 3harmfulfoods.com forward slash Nino and get started folks. And uh, I listen, everything that I push here, folks, I try myself and I'm definitely staying away from these food, these foods and my skin feels, looks better. I feel more vibrant. I've lost some weight. I'm always trying different things, but this works. So, all right, North Angel, this is crazy because I feel like this hawk to a girl. It's just, it's just an example of where we're at in the, in society. And she literally came stumbling out of a bar drunk and goes, hawk, like on, a, on, a, on an interview and that went wild all over the internet while there's kids that are four or five six years old that are playing i've seen them playing mozart okay on a on a piano i mean th this is like they should be getting attention like wh what happened to things that are hard to do like why are we paying attention to this stuff to such idiocracy and that's and you and i are having to cover this because the only reason we're covering this though folks is to show examples of where we're at so we so that we are aware and i'm sure everyone watching this right now knows like yeah of course of course this is where we're at i know so, it's kind of crazy yeah it is very crazy it's disgusting um <laughs> it's so crazy i mean all right so here it says uh met should be ashamed of themselves for hakua girl first pitch <laughs> on camp day so, you know, I got to throw the first pitch out a couple of times. I think, well, where did I do it? I did it in Anaheim. Uh, I did it. The, uh, the What's the team in Anaheim? Uh, why am I thinking about the Angels? Is it yeah, the Angels? Yeah, I guess it is. Yeah, the Angels. I could I threw be out wrong. I the first pitch for them once, and then I did it for the uh, El Paso wow, that's cool. Was. Yeah, but that's I mean. That's really cool. But I, I felt like, you know, hey, I was a professional boxer, undefeated at the time. I felt like I earned a – that was pretty cool to get out there and throw the first pitch. But now you just got to be able to talk about giving a blowjob and boom, you're shot to the to the stratosphere and fame. Men should be ashamed of themselves for hawk to a girl first pitch on camp day. 
So yeah. is there a psychiatrist in the house, a major league baseball commissioner, Steve Cohen, the Mets general manager, a quality control officer? How about a good old fashioned teacher, none with a ruler? It was camp day in City Field on Thursday afternoon. Thousands of kids in the ballpark, many of them already irreversibly desensitized and antisocialized by the commercial prompts that attack their vulnerable central nervous systems before they can distinguish bad from worse. And that's the truth. So the Mets did what any prudent, cautious babysitter would do. They invited a 22-year-old woman who found sudden fame. Sudden fame of and following thanks to a TikTok video of her imitating how she prepares to perform oral sex. Dressed in her in a Mets jersey, they honored her by having her throw out the ceremonial first pitch. I still cannot believe that I'm hearing you read those words. Yeah. Like you would you wouldn't you wouldn't have seen that 10 years ago. Even 10 years ago or 15 years ago. You know, I, I just but here we are now. And I'm reading this with all sincerity. I got to make a confession. Um, I'm originally a diehard baseball fan. Mets were my only team. I would fight with any baseball fan that was a Yankee person. And I was really good. I was always arguing, debating stats and everything like that. So this is heartbreaking as a Mets fan. Uh, I know so that you really are a Met keep, fan. Like this is like this is. I mean, I don't heart. keep I I don't keep up with the latest. But when I was growing up, I mean, I was doing little rituals like, oh my god, these are my favorite team players, and I had to have my little souvenirs, and I would do little stupid things like, okay, I have to like like acknowledge all of them and and give them little kisses and pray for these men so they could have a great um thing, and and it wasn't. <laughs> And and the funny thing is that I was really a fan. I wasn't like, oh my god, these men are look so good and 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 tight and and they're tight uniforms, which is obviously a thing. But it was about the sport. Like it was about, um, you know, and and I would tr and try to imitate them. You know, try to bat, and I would always look forward to the first pitch because they made a big deal about it. You had to. Uh, it, it was like they, you were someone. You had to be known but for now something you have to be prestigious, an like influencer. Yeah, that <sighs> it's just just an influencer. Yeah, and then no, the thing it's... is that it's camp day. It's camp day. This is for the kids, and you have someone. Hold on, wait a second. It's this was. Wait a second. How did that just escape me? This was in front of kids. The the thing is that this particular um um. You know how they have themes in the baseball, like this is for the elders or this is for yeah. whatever. This particular was like camp day was for the kids for summer camp. Oh my gosh! And they pulled this really. Yeah, so you people see how are the upset. New York Post was kind of yeah, they were kind of making a mockery out of it too. Like, oh, someone we need a nun with a ruler. It's like, I don't know. I mean, from from what I see, it's just an example to me of how far we've slid in society. You know, I I just. Is this the uh that was the first pitch? Oh boy, here we go. Let's watch this. <laughs> I mean, there's not a lot of people there. Isn't that her best friend that was with her? I think that's the girl that's with her, but I, I, I don't know too much of the details. It's just that the contrast is crazy. You know, because at the same time, um, in the same week, you had a group of Republicans going to City Field, which is where she threw the first pitch. And this woman, if you've been to a MAGA rally in the East Coast or any Trump supporting or, the, or in the Republic, she is so active. Everybody knows who this lady or is. Or Moody, is that who it is? Or Moody, yes. So she was denied access into the same game, or she was. I'm not sure it was the same game, but it happened within the, in the same week. Like um, this, this hawk tour, and thing, that's you with her. Was, yeah, <laughs> I mean, this woman is everywhere. This this woman is everywhere. So she was denied access. They told her that um, one of the supervisors told her on site that she um, that the hat was too political. And she had to walk back to her car and leave it. Wow. Can you believe that stuff? They're telling so, people what they can and can't wear into the stadium. 
But that's the same stadium they let the huh, Tua girl throw the first pitch. With in the same week, it might have been the same day, but I, I'm sorry, I this didn't should make get everyone just so angry. So and she made off. and and I did get a statement from Aura Moody um, that she made uh, to Cafecito Break, and one of the things that she told us is that the that she the upon hearing that they didn't want her let let her in with her Make America Great Again hat, she said the first thing I did was that I invoked my First Amendment right. Yeah, and that didn't that didn't happen. I mean, look, this story is still making waves on social media. You know, um, it was covered by the Daily Mail UK as well. That's how. Um, and and then of course she sent me a message, uh, letting me know about it as well. But what's kind of interesting about this story is that Ora Moody is such a beloved member of the conservative Republican of the medical freedom activism, like she's always up in Albany um, fighting for children's rights and, and health and wellness. And so she's beloved and all so sorts of they, people have come they, out to support this woman. Even Roger Stone says something. You have people who are Kennedy supporters who work um, supporting Kennedy, what were reposting and, and writing their own articles about this woman because she is so beloved in the community. And the reason I was so passionate about sharing um, uh, this story with your audience, Nino, is that she should have been the one throwing the first pitch, if anything. Yeah, no. This I... is a this is a black Latina woman who's a diehard, uh, I love America woman. I mean, there right. she is singing, singing. <laughs> so let me singing ask you this: so like, did Trump. they tell her like, "Hey, you can come in, but you just can't wear the hat"? Yeah, they well, not that, yeah, that they, not that that's to... any better. Okay, like that, that's no, not that. She, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, she could come in, but she had to leave the hat in the car. But wow. here's the inconsistencies of the BS. She was with a group, and some of them were able to get in with their MAGA hats. What? So it's, it's yeah, so it's inconsistent policy. So how were some of her people? So can you imagine she goes through this experience? She has to go back into her car, um, leave, leave her hat, and then she goes in only to learn that some of the people that were in her group didn't make it through. They were there with their Make America Great Again hats or Trump supporting hats, and nothing. They weren't stopped. So what's going on? What's the? She did like stuff it down her pants and just walked in and then put it on when she was in the stands and started singing "God Bless America" or something and like get go viral. L <laughs> let me tell you, this is let me tell you, this is not the lady that shies away. Like she's had su several viral moments, and people in the MAGA Trump community, especially like on the East Coast where we're at, they know her. She's she's well known. Wow. I, I mean, I just, uh, I think to myself, I had a friend that, uh, streaked across a football field back in the day and they, they obviously caught him and, and they threw him out of the, they threw him out. He was, he was in college and, and everyone knew him. I'm not going to say his name, but he snuck back in and, and did it again. <laughs> Same <laughs> game. I was like, wow, that's pretty epic, bro. That's pretty legendary. But you know, <laughs> I mean, I couldn't believe he did that. Um, oh, sorry. It's all right. What is this right here? Uh, the night entry, Hawk Tour Girl. Yeah, so all you right. could go to the to the. So then the other thing explains the backlash. Um, that the Hawk Tour Girl has been receiving. Hello, viewers. Welcome back to SSN Twenty Four. Today, we're diving into the controversy surrounding Haley Welch, popularly known as the Hawk Tour Girl. After she threw the ceremonial first, you can see that she's just enjoying this fame. I mean, it's it's like, but it's not. I don't. I can't imagine this lasting longer than another, what month or two max. I mean, internet fame is like a vapor. It's fast. Yeah. It's faster than television. Anything like that. It's like you'll be you'll be you'll make. A, I I can't imagine she'll be twenty three, twenty four, still riding the fame. I just don't see it, unless she does something that that's even more cutting edge even more disgusting or or sells herself up more which is very possible folks i mean anything's possible but i i can't see her writing this hot thing much longer than what it what's what we're already seeing here pitch at city field welch who became an internet sensation earlier this summer for her viral hawk Tua remark faced backlash from new york mets fans for her appearance at thursday's game against the oakland athletics many mets fans were upset with the team's decision to invite welch 
especially since her rise to fame was linked to a viral video where the phrase she used had sexual connotations. Fans ex I mean, you don't have her pitch at a kid's camp, but look at her. She's she's a completely, I hate to say this, but she's pretty goofy looking to me. And it looks like she just, it's it's almost, the, the, the reason I, I kind of, I'm intrigued by this is because she it's almost like a like a Truman show or like an experiment. Like just some average kind of dorky type girl that like gets this accidental fame and let's see what she does with it type thing. You know what I mean? But it's like it's famous for I mean, what? For what? He, here's the thing, right? Like she was there raising awareness for like the like the animals, right? And I get it. I mean, that's a nice cause. The same thing is like, I feel like you got to earn it. It feels, this is a little bit of a side note, but one time I got into a big like discussion with another woman who was getting my face like about the idea of competitiveness. And she's like, why would you want to compete? Like, that's like, it's, it's so exhausting. And in my mind, I'm like, why wouldn't I? Like, I compete with myself every day. I want to be better. I want to learn more. I want to be better. I, I, if I'm gaining a little weight, I want to learn how to, like, like slim down a bit, like, to be well, you better. You keep at, pushing yourself, right. Right, and, and to keep progressing. And all of a sudden, we have this culture of, I just showed up, give me right. all of my accolades. Entirely. And here's the thing. Here's the thing, and I want to make this clear. I am not in any way directing any of this to this young lady, let her benefit from whatever's coming to her in the most benevolent ways. What I'm saying is that the system is so broken that they rather give airtime to someone who's just has this influencer status than people that have substance, that have right. experience, that have intelligence, that have critical thinking. We are starving for those things right now. Right, but they, but they control the media. And they, yeah. and, you know, this type of thing. And, and honestly, like, like society's being herded like cattle into this stupefying decline. And that's what we're seeing, you know, and, and people glorify this shit now. And I don't glorify it. I'm making an example out of this with my audience. Um, but enough with the Hawk to a girl. Let's talk about, <laughs> let's get, yeah, I'm done with it. I can't, I can't go any longer with that. Let's talk about JLo and Ben uh, Affleck and Diddy, because there's rumors going around folks that, from what I understand, and I told you, Los Angeles, I was like, we got to cover this because Ben Affleck, he's like left the reservation, man. That guy's got a mohawk now, wearing tight shirts, tight leather jackets. I'm like, what the hell's happened to this guy? Midlife crisis, point two point oh. Um, but it's like I I can see why he's, you know, he's battled with J Lo for so long, and the rumor is, from my understanding, now correct me if I'm wrong, Los Angeles, that Suge Knight came out and said. That that he stated that the FBI, when they raided P. Diddy, they came across tapes of J. Lo uh, doing certain things, correct? And J. And then they went, they approached Ben Affleck and showed him these things. Now these are allegedly these are rumors. We don't know that this is not validated, folks. But this is what's kind of circling around. This is the this is the gossip, right, or what you would call bochinche, or what is it called? El bochinche, <laughs> el bochinche from the what? street. And let me tell you, like. It's so tricky because all people have our stories and bochinche and just a few people who have been willing to speak. And, um, you know, we also always have to keep in mind, like, who is telling the story and what do they have to gain or not from what they're sharing, right? Uh, the whole thing with J-Lo Ben have, has been a big novella. I've been watching it unfold with the pandemic, the New York Post was has been covering their every move. Oh, they went here. They went to get ice cream. Oh, she looks upset. He looks upset. Did they have a fight? Are they are divorce rumors in the air? And then that's what it seems like. But to this day, there is no concrete information. Just what's that? What does it say? Well, there's smoke, there's fire. So here's yeah. the thing. This is why and we kind of have to talk about it. And, and I have say to this. make a full confession. I've been hesitant to talk about it because this is very dicey territory. Right. But I'll say this as a man and as an alpha, you always look at it. I don't care what, I don't care what woman cries over this or whatever. Oh, that's not fair. No men are always looking at a woman's track record, man. And if Ben Affleck <laughs> knows that she hung out with B Diddy, what do you think happened? 
I mean, come on. This guy is like the, the most the, the most renowned like poster boy for sexual predators. I mean, this is the guy. And you're going to tell me she was just I mean, she was dating him for how long? Like a, a couple of years, right? I mean, she was with P. Diddy for a while. I mean, what kind of in my mind, what kind of lies was she telling Ben Affleck to just keep their relationship afloat? And then something happened to what he found out the truth and maybe he always suspected it. I mean, every like something, ever... something happened for sure. Like, how does she go from like this? Oh, my God, they're coming together again. Right. But they, they got married. Get engaged. They? Yeah, they got engaged. They bought a house. They got married. But, yeah. She oh. invested all this money in her um, the, the the movies and, and the tour. You know, she put in a lot of money and she was telling um the, her story and it, everything went like this. And all of a sudden, overnight. Boom. Everything came undone for J Lo. I'm wondering, you know how there's all these different sort of um, humiliation things that happen to celebrities, and everybody has a different sort of like. You go up, and then you have a a, a different Crash. way of toppling yeah. down and crashing. Um, I feel empathy for watching this as a woman watching J Lo. She's Puerto Rican. She's from the Bronx. I have to admit that when I used to work at MTV. Every, I used to tell people, don't talk bad about my girl J-Lo. So this is hard for me to talk about community for real. Like I've done, uh, uh, I've been in um, in productions, uh, you know, little VH1 or MTV shoots with J-Lo and her sister too on separate occasions. And not that we knew each other, but you talked through her people, right? So I understood how well controlled everything was. And I understand that a lot of the criticism that JLo gets is that she's very distant and she seems to be, um, you know, a, a controller of the messaging. I don't know. The thing is that there's a lot of speculation and there's also a lot of people who don't know crap, just willing to dive in and just talk shit so about you, you something and, they you don't and know. You are from the same hood, right? Um, well, we're same hood in terms of being Puerto Rican, but she's from the Bronx. I'm a Brooklyn Puerto Rican. Okay, well, <laughs> okay, well, all, all I yeah, can say we, we, is... we, there's a different kind of spice. <laughs> all right, well, okay, all I can say is every time I see Ben Affleck and J Lo together in a picture, he looks miserable. The dude looks like he wants to off himself. Like he looks like every single picture I've ever seen him in with her, he just looks like his soul has been sucked out of him. And I really think you know J Lo is. <laughs> Jezebel. I mean, Jezebel spirit, 100%. They go raid Puffy's house. And they get all these videos of J-Lo doing this and J-Lo doing that. And they know the fact that J-Lo lied and said that the gun was shined or whatever and sent that man to prison and destroyed his life and she knew it was tough. Not sure can I do the most from jail and spilling all that Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez tea. And honey, don't let those bars fool you. He knows a lot. Ups from jail and look, look at this for a second. Hold on. Look at this picture. And all that Ben Affleck and look at that. Look at him. He looks just like run like he's been through the ringer. <sighs> yeah, look, to be fair, there's so many different um How stories about she that looks because like, I was like, <laughs> she looks happy. I got this one. Some of the bochinche is that, you know, she it's like he's he seems to be more like a private person and she's also so famous. So they don't ever have a moment of privacy. Um, I'm, I'm sure you dealt with just that, too, you know, when you were out in the streets and, and people knew who you were like there's a level of um, irritation <laughs> with the public that comes with that. I was never, obviously never at this level, never was. But I mean, I was at a level of like, you know, people that was, I, some people would see me in Vegas. Some people would see me in different, it would be kind of weird when someone would come up to me other than El Paso and, hey, champ, I watched your fighter. I, Whoa, I'd be kind of thrown off. So, yeah, I mean, um, but to see this and just to know that he's probably the laughing stock of the community, of the hip hop community, they probably know the stories of J-Lo. And she's kind of like the do 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 the white guy that just kind of you know like th they probably look at him like a schlep you know I would have to say sorry and he probably knows that <laughs> deep down inside no I'm being serious I mean I'm like, men, well, men did have locker room talk this is like why women people do. this is why people like your show because you just say it like it is I don't <laughs> you're care. blunt I don't, I don't really give a shit at all but let's watch a little more of this. 
and Jennifer Lopez T. And honey, don't let those bars fool you. He knows a lot. Okay, you guys, when you think about it, at what point did Ben Affleck start distancing himself publicly from Jennifer Lopez? Around March, which is when the raid on Diddy's house happened. And it was also around the same time J-Lo was being mentioned a lot in reference to being Diddy's accomplice. Child, were we right? Diddy is the reason why Ben left J-Lo. But hold on, there's more. You won't believe what Suge Knight dropped that made it clear that Ben is done the done 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 with J-Lo because of Diddy. Suge Knight says that he is quite sure Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez are headed for a divorce since the FBI gave Ben Affleck some very explicit tapes of J-Lo. I'm quite sure they probably called the, the FBI gave the, the courtesy call of Ben Affleck. It's a white man who got respect in the white world. I'm quite sure they said, we want to show you some things. Mm -hmm. It's about your wife. When he sees this shit, that her and Puffy was doing and who they were doing it with, I'm quite sure they gave the guy those tapes. Baby, in case. Oh, man. And I know, oh, yeah. I know Ben Affleck is like a uh, like a raging alcoholic, isn't he? I mean, I've heard, I've heard he's struggling. Uh, I, I'm not one to talk about that because obviously I've had my struggles and and my <laughs> I've hit rock bottom multiple times, but it's a hard thing to get over. But if you're around someone that's toxic like her, I would imagine, okay, just in my the from me on the outside looking in, I would imagine that would just that would drive you to drink. You know, that would drive you to always be miserable and drink. And it doesn't seem like he can let her go. Like he has a, he has a very hard time cutting the cord. There's, there's something with them. You know, I don't know, like, again, the thing with celebrities that sometimes, you know, there's arranged celebrity ships. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't think that this is an arranged. I think that she, that she loves him and, you know, things that, what I would hear about JLo is that she's a really hardworking woman and she's really passionate about just being like, executing everything with does, as does much she, perfection now, as she, possible. Does she, does she have kids? I don't even know. Does she have kids? Yes. She, okay, so um, she has, has uh, twins uh, that came when she was married with Mark Anthony. Oh, so she has kids with Mark Anthony, but nothing with Ben mm -hmm. Affleck. No. Um, does she, Ben Affleck well, have she's kids? Like from... a, yeah, with Jennifer Garner. So they're like you know, and, and from what I understand, at least the way the the press reports is that they they have relationships with the stepchildren and they, you know, they have their own bonding. Uh, yeah, this is tricky. But hmm. the thing is that this to me, the story has kind of gotten quiet. And I'm wondering, are we going to is all hell going to break loose very soon? Because don't you feel like the temperature seems to be increasing so oh, much man. i mean i i have to tell you like i i've been feeling so uneasy i've been having like many dreams about a, a pandemic 2.0 and 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 just more chaos in the streets and i'm wondering if they're gonna release a distraction and and with like diddy stuff at the same time that's something else that we really should all... be paying attention to happens I think it's all going to come out at once. I think I think we're going to get yeah. hit from every side. I, this is yeah. war. Yeah, I think, I, think I, I agree with you. I agree with so, you. Let's jump to Don Lemon here. Don Lemon aye, went aye, to aye. Deep Blue State of New Jersey and got his foot stuck in his mouth. Right? I mean, this is mm -hmm. pathetic. So he went there to New Jersey, which is what is supposed to be pretty liberal, correct? Yeah, it's blue country. <laughs> so there, and he got basically laughed at. One guy laughed in his face when he tried to claim the economy is better under Kamala Harris than it is under. Oh, this is this is gold. So yeah. Who do you want? Trump. Why don't you like Harris? Let's try. We're here Atlantic in Jersey, City. Atlantic City. Who do you support? Trump. I, I plead the fifth. Trump for the win. Tell me why. I can't really call that right now, but I just feel like she's not good for president. She's good vice, but not for the actual lead role for the country. Does it have anything to do with being a woman? No. Mm -mm. No, because I feel like women, <laughs> mm, nah, you're not going to give me that. Your money's on Harris. Yeah. Who do you want? Trump. Why don't you like Harris? Oh, uh, she doesn't have any experience. Uh, She's she the vice president. Five. She's a she, senator. Yeah, no, no experience. No, no, no. She had no experience. Well, I want Donald Trump. I just feel we need somebody that has a stronger background with the military and 
world in general. She was a prosecutor and attorney general and a senator and a vice president. This You're in a gambling town. I don't mean anything. I support the I Democratic I mean, Party. But, are, I mean, Trump looks like he, he got it in the bag right now. Four years ago, it was a lot better. I made a lot more money than I do now. I know you feel that way, mm -hmm. but that's not actually what the record shows. The economy is actually better <laughs> under Biden. No, I'm yeah, serious. Laugh what, what, that's what the facts you watch show. CNN? Okay, you know what? No, 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 that's not because I watch CNN. Trump or Harris? Trump. That's who's going to win. That's who's going to win. Who you support? I support Trump. All the people that came to this country <laughs> legally, it's not fair that they're letting all 10,000 to 15,000 people or 20,000 people here illegally. More than that. In San Diego. Oh, millions. Keep adding zeros. Millions keep, upon yeah, millions keep upon millions. Zeros. Papi, you're a little bit too short with that number. It's not 10,000. It's millions. Well, see, these people are – this is the regular – so he's doing like a street walk. I remember mm – -hmm. I remember Man Jay on Lona, the street. Yeah, Jay Leno used to do that in the, the his night show, but it's kind of like these people it's are – It's fun. The, <laughs> yeah, but this is like – this is the common political IQ, man. Like my audience is something different. Obviously, your audience is something different, but this is what, what – this is what is out there, and people really don't know. And if these people – and then there's a certain mm -hmm. way that Trump speaks to people at his rallies, and there's a reason for that, and people don't understand that. you got to talk to people uh, with eighth-grade type of vocabulary and grammar. You got to just... Colloquial. Yeah. You gotta, mm -hmm. that's, how you, that's how you reach the masses. You don't, you don't go over their heads because they'll just turn you off. you got to talk to them at their level. And uh, I had a friend that was in broadcasting in, in the news, and she told me it's, it's eighth-grade level, six six mm -hmm. eighth grade level and i was like golly man that's embarrassing yeah it is and i mean I, I, that's one of the reasons that i'm always communicating in the most simple way i'm trying to use universal words to communicate a message because words are getting so weaponized right now well, and if that lemon here's the other thing though like i'm kind of like wondering right like that lemon went from being like el jefe I, and you know, on the screen, and now he's doing man on the street interviews. It's almost like, is that like a step down? Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying. Like he's trying to boost like, up his career. He's trying to re rebuild his career because he, Elon Musk just kind of put the nail in the coffin for him. You know what I mean? And he, and here's mm -hmm. the thing: the reason you do, and another thing, folks, when you talk to people at a sixth to eighth grade level. You got to remember, like, if you're if you're above that, people will look at you and go, ah, he's the conspiracy guy. Ah, he's crazy. Ah, he's weird. He's the weirdo because they can't relate. They can't understand. They can't identify with you when you talk over their head. And that that's the truth of it. That really is the truth of it. And it's sad that America is that way. And I I guess you could blame the school system. I don't know. The, the broken families as well. The whole system. You know, but the thing is the audacity of like Don Lemon, he's asking a question and he's not satisfied with the responses he's getting. Like, no, the economy no. is great. The, the economy yeah. has never been better. You're saying that to someone who's telling you directly <laughs> his experience. And this is what they do. They're like gaslighting you. Mayor Adams in New York does it all the time. Despite all the rumors, crime is not up. It's down. Really? Really? No, you guys are fudging with numbers to make it seem like that. Right. People people know. I, I think that what's happening right now is that there's such an anger from the streets from like common folks because um nothing um wakes it's, people it's up. The twilight then. Zone. Yeah. And also like <laughs> look the other day I went I was going to the supermarket and I'm like twelve a dozen eggs for like ten, eleven, twelve dollars. Yeah, man. I heard it's like a 50% increase, right? Milk? Like, everything is just like, you know, there's, there were times where I'm looking at a Ben & Jerry's ice creams or like a little ice cream thing and it's like $9, $10. I'm like, Are I don't need ice cream that much. Yes, yes. Um, Sometimes Boy, you see them on sale. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, a lot of people are resorting to with, with things like this good opportunities come up, right? Because a lot of people are like, you know, my sister's been learning how to make bread. You wow. you learn how yeah, to like, yeah. like, like take recipes. Because the other thing too is that we've noticed is that when the party, right? And we went into lockdown, then we went into like, say like places like Whole Foods. It's almost like I noticed that I would get 
the same product supposedly and it didn't taste the same there was something different about it and then there's fruit that we're questioning now uh so you don't even know what you're consuming no. i think that this is a great opportunity for people to be like we need to so call us there's a lot of patriot companies that are that are advertising selling products buy in bulk get with family members buy in bulk um because this conversation with don lemon he may be not prepared for the responses but at the same time he's living a different lifestyle but you know those people you that know he's he not was, a, he, you know those people that he was interviewing right now that just 40 years ago they probably ba- voted biden they probably wanted probably, to vote yes. i mean of as well so this is mm-hmm. a huge change this is a, t- a turning of the tide the worm has turned, and that's what that proves to me. That shows me that people are like, uh-uh, this country is in the gutter, and these people are saying it. So to me, yeah. to prove more further, folks, that the gun, the country is in the gutter, wait till you see this. Oh, so my God. So you thought men boxing in the Olympics, was, uh, boxing women in the Olympics was bad. Well, watch this. So here we are, the face-off kiss-off. Okay, so here, Craig Jones versus Gabby Garcia. So this wasn't. This wasn't like a boxing match. They weren't. They, this was a jujitsu match with Gabby Garcia, which is a. I'm going to tell you right now, a monstrous woman. She's big. She's big, folks. Wait till you see this. She's huge. And mm-hmm. the thing with this is, she wanted. Did she want to fight a man, or did Craig want to fight her? I don't know what it is, but obviously it was mutual. They got it done. It was mutual. I think that they've been having this conversation for a few years and discussing the terms because she is. I hate using that expression, the goat, but that's what people call her in her uh, lane. She's she's the world champion. So I guess he's a world champion, too. Well, obviously, for, she's a woman's women's yeah, heavyweight. Yeah, she with, huge. Right. For, she's a, a woman's world champion. Um, she's got, I think, the most medals. <laughs> and I guess he is would be the counterpart in his lane. I don't know. Forgive me, fam. The sports is not my lane. <laughs> well, see, I, but, I didn't even know about this. So, what is this called? An intersex, or what is this called? A intergender inter- jujitsu inter- match. Intergender, so, the first one. Okay. And there's so, a lot of controversy. We got we got another announcement here today. The most decorated female athlete of all time, Gabby Garcia, has put pen to paper to face me. <laughs> on my own event so we're talking 10 11 time world champion four-time adcc champion me in that purple sky and as the wheels are rolling free on youtube really yeah we want to put it free on youtube because we like everything i want to do about this event is to grow the sport you eight, but i'm and i always mess you because you are pussy because like you are bitch i know we got to get we got to get rid of the sexual tension somehow you know mm. so we're going to throw it one way <laughs> Yeah. That's I mean, that's in the contract. If I lose, I have to do some things. Maybe sell that on our only fans, but. Okay, so the fact of the matter is they did throw down, folks. But hold on. Before we get to that, here is the face-off kiss-off. This is hilarious. So mm-hmm. he. Uh... That's good. Man, I'm out, really. A bitch, man. Craig, really? It's almost like he's not taking this serious, but she's taking this 100% serious. She's pissed off. She, to me, she looks like Andre the Giant's twin. She got really upset. Like, after this, uh, she posted the, the fight is canceled. And apparently, they didn't know if the fight was going to happen until, like, almost at the last minute. Because she was you really fight upset. Even more. She so, was okay. like, you you crossed the line. I've Again. seen this happen. I've seen this happen with two men, by the way, in the boxing match. And that dude, the guy that kissed the other guy, that guy that got kissed was so pissed off, but he, he still got knocked out. <laughs> 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 well, this is crazy. But wait, so okay, so okay. So this is where this is my unfamiliar territory, right? So I guess the taunting is a thing because they've been taunting each other, but he's been very, very, very sexual in his references with her. And then apparently there was this sit down interview with her and him and this other man that I guess is a part of 
who has been a part of the same sport who interview and it was I only showed a little clip but it was like maybe like an x-rated chat like it was really? really really bad and she was handling it it almost seems like like just from the observer looking in almost like there's this like they looking at her like you're such an exotic woman and, and then you're also a champion. I almost want to like figure out how to conquer and defeat you and that and this man, like I don't know, like he's something else. Let's look at this again. <laughs> man! <laughs> man, I mean I really a bitch, man. Craig, really? Man, I'm fuck you, man. You cross the line. You cross the line. Cross the line. Cross the line. Sai daqui, porra! Para de me. She hit the camera guy. Yeah, yeah. So. Sai fa! Man! Man, I mean, oh, I really. A bitch, man! Craig, I guys, love this guy. This guy. I mean, he's just not taking it serious at all. So no, this, no. So the match, is this the match down here? Should I play the interview or no? I think you want to play it. It's like because it sort of adds a, a layer to it. And, and I understand that there's this is part of what fighters do as I'm learning. But this is a little bit much. Yeah, I feel like this here. I mean, I wouldn't want to finish her too quickly. The fans wouldn't appreciate it. <laughs> Come a long way. You want to tenderize that one for a while? Yeah, we want some foreplay. <laughs> you want to rotisserie host that one? I wanted to feel the positional control. <laughs> control that Before one. Before we penetrate the legs. And then we'll, we'll go naked? How long is the hound going to be? Three, five. Three, five. Three, five mini hound. <laughs> and you're going to, when you say you're going to beat that one in how, how long? I'm going to put her in submissions. <laughs> Get close to finishing her, but not. <laughs> then allow, switch the position. Not allow her to finish until I decide. It's Man, there is a lot of sexual tension here. This oh, guy's creating. Yeah. This guy's creating. He's creating it. According to her, though, because you know I was exploring little bochinches on the side. Um, she doesn't find him or the other guy who's uh, uh, equally flirting with her. It seems in the interview attractive because she likes chocolate. Okay, well, I bet that changed. She gets finished. He's gonna, you're gonna edge, you're gonna edge her. She needs an edging, she needs it. She's very tense. She's walking. I around. like it, no, now I like it. I'm so excited for this match right now. It feels like, Woo! this is not what happens. <laughs> Look at the face. Look at his face. <laughs> I'm very okay. excited from this. I'm excited from your dress. Did you, did you make this uh, from scratch? No. Where you are, my grandma. From, oh, her nipples. Your grandma is Mac Dama? Mm -hmm. Your grandma have a, a she's have a exquisite chest. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, this is just. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, this is where we're at. Is this the match? Oh, here it is. It should be. This is the 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 last round, and then the next uh, clip is a full uh the full match. If you want to see a little bit more, it's pretty interesting. Okay, so he's just toying with her. He's playing with her, obviously. <laughs> I mean, they got a lot of publicity from this. I mean, they did. Look, this and that didn't show you much. So this is why I included the other video. But still, if you if you ask me, this still isn't as bad as the boxing because the boxing, yeah, that, that's a dude. I mean, men hitting women. I mean, yeah, that's crazy. This is you know, jujitsu. Still, you're still. It's not a serious. It's not a fight. Boxing is more of a fight. It's a fight. Wait hitting. till you see the way they were flipping and flopping around. I'm like, goodness gracious, that's so close. 71 victories in her competitive career. And ladies and gentlemen, Craig Jones quickly 
out on the legs. Heavy pressure from Gabby Garcia to sprawl here. Listen, the, cr the crowd, they paid their money to be here. They were disappointed when Craig put his clothes back on. <laughs> we found Craig's line. He wasn't even willing to do that. <laughs> So one of the running jokes here has been, you know, Craig is wondering what his method of victory is going to be. And there's a bit of a sideways as to whether he Jeez, he's smiling like he's enjoying this. He can <laughs> footlock Gabby Garcia. Oh, my God. Well, she's in on a body lock here, trying to drive forward, work her way to the back. Gonna get tossed. Do you remember Andy Kaufman used to do this? He used to he used to wrestle women. Do you remember that? Have you seen the Andy Kaufman? Well, Jim Carrey played him in the movie, but... Andy Kaufman used to like call out women, women wrestlers, I think it was, and go out there and beat the crap out of them in the ring. I mean, Andy Kaufman himself was a, was a, just, he's doing this, this guy's doing like what would Andy Kaufman do? perhaps. And you, you know, they were joking about it in the measurements earlier on. They said that Gabby was 300 pounds. They said Craig is 175. He's not, but he's still significantly smaller than Gabby. That is absolute fact. Let's go. Uh, playing off guard oh. here. Oh. It's the triangle. There you go, my brother. <laughs> oh, we got Renato Laranja in the corner as well. Nice to see he got his gi on finally. Oh, no, what the hell looks like? <laughs> she looks like she's doing the hot thing. Oh, my God. Oh, boy. I mean, this guy is just making a mockery out of her. This is crazy. You got to move the brain. Yeah, you got to move the brain, my brother. Craig coming around no. to the back triangle here. Yeah, the triangle on the It's not going to work. There's too much space from the brain. Well, also, Gabby Garcia, she's in a bit of trouble here early. That's a horse weave. you got to watch out for that. She's uh, manages to attract her leg. She's it's driving forward trying to sit Jones down. I think Jack, Gabby's going to try and smash him now that she's out in the fun and games. You know, Gabby's taking this one seriously. And she's known for her grinding pressure. Looking to come up on the oh, body line. Reverse with the reversal. by Jones now. I, I, I you Getting that arm oh, stretched out up against the wall here. Never mind that New Zealand. Where did this take place? Las Vegas. Oh, this happened in Las Vegas. Was it a yeah, I guess it sounded it, like it was yeah and from what i understand it was his event like i said they they've been discussing terms i think that it was a, there was a million dollars on the line if she won um and then there was a little joke that if she lost then that means that um he she would do an only fans bit with her, with him i don't oh know if God. that's just a joke or if it's really going to happen um i think that upon further investigating i learned that Gabby missed a really important ceremony that I guess has is like a hall of fame for her um, in order to be there. Uh, and I think that they did it because they want to, they, they, you know, this is their sport, you know, her as a representing for women, him representing for men, and they want to um, make it bigger. Right. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, jiu-jitsu is huge. I mean, it's a worldwide sport. I mean, I don't understand why. Maybe, like, with their brands making it bigger in, in that sense, I'm not sure. Like I said, this is not my domain, uh, but this is definitely entertaining. I honestly don't know how I feel about it, but they seem to be okay. It ended with, like, her, like, you know, like, being, like, in gratitude and and I don't know, like it, it's, I still don't know how I feel about the whole men, women thing, but right. I, like you said, this isn't being, this isn't a knockout. This isn't like an MMA. Right. This is, this is coming right after the, uh, the Olympic debacle too, where I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of controversy around that. So oh, I, I don't know. I, <laughs> well, Chris, this is, so funny, is funny. this is so much different. I mean, you know, he's not punching a woman, you know? Mm -hmm. he's yeah. Here, like I'm here, he's not willing to do it. What's that? Say oh yeah, no, I was saying that I I don't I I don't feel turned off in the way I would like. I'm not no MMA, no 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 boxing, no no no. Like right, you right, know, right. this seems like you know they both agree. They're both adults. They know what they're doing. But it will it start a trend? Who knows? Here in Vegas, she she's trained under Professor Scholes. 
There we go. Gabby trading off oh, now to a straight ankle lock, and now we got another oh, one. Another big heel. Oh hook. my God, brutal. She, she shakes her head again. She don't have a, a tendonitis in there. She don't have a tendonitis. Yeah, hey, you, you abort mission. Abort. Well, he's going to roll through to uh, potentially the back again. Another truck position. I mean, he's going to have to strangle her. He had yeah. two really, really you know, deep like, heel hooks. I mean, in all seriousness, right? Genuinely, it never occurred to me that if he just refuses to tap, he has to be willing to hurt her. None of this shit is and I don't people. know if he is. Listen, Craig has messed around with Gabby non-stop over the last couple of months. Uh, in the oh, oh this is it right here. There's no real ill will here, but yeah, he might have to put her to sleep because I don't think she's willing to tap. Big squeeze coming. Oh, she does! Tap. The red naked Joe gets the job done. Craig Jones victorious over Gabby Garcia in the second round. I mean, it seems like they're laughing and having a good time. I don't know how serious yeah. it is, but I mean, to, yeah. me, to me, that was it's still entertainment. I don't know mm -hmm. how I feel about it, but it was entertaining. It was entertaining. It's entertaining. I mean, Maybe these the days, box. like, you know, we live in the attention economy uh, yeah. and people are, are creating drama. So we don't know if they created their own novella or he created his own novella. And she, <laughs> she was like, I'm taking this serious. This is my sport. <laughs> I'm actually a competitor here. And he is too, but he seemed to be light about it and he was um, laughing the whole time i mean it's laughing kinda like, and, it's and kinda she like, was smiling too and she was smiling too yeah i don't know it reminded me of like grade school crushes or something i don't know it was weird it was a weird that thing to watch weird. i don't know <laughs> i don't know what this is like what world are we in again which earth is this the three the, or three or four like <laughs> i don't know where we go from here we keep I, zigzagging I, I don't know where we go from here man this is so crazy like like how much deeper do we go into the sludge? I mean, I just, we got to turn this around, folks. We got to turn this around. This is getting crazy because. It's getting crazy. I, I was just saying on a show, I think it was the other day, I said that uh, I had an, I have a friend that's an accountant. He's like, gosh, bro, you would not believe how many of my clients are all, have OnlyFans. He's like, all the women wow. have OnlyFans. He was telling their lawyers, their doctors that have good professions that are doing the only fans on the side and making more money doing that. He said, and that's coming from an accountant. And I mean, it's just like, where have the morals values and ethics gone? I mean, society today is just anything goes. And that's sad because that's definitely going to just, that's going to just, that's going to destroy the family unit that in itself, like it's already, if it's already not, not destroyed enough, but yeah, there's gonna be no hope. I mean, if, 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 um, if this is where, where we're at, where we're at now, where else are we heading? And to the transhumanism, growing babies in incubator in, in incubators. I mean, this is just going to get to the point that there's going to be no more human connection. You're going to be doing everything over this interface. And, and we're basically already there. And, and uh, Jamie Kennedy said it best when I had him on my show. He said, currency is the new or attention is the new currency. Likes yeah. is the new currency. And like, that's what it seems yeah. like where this is all gone. So well, Rose Angel, I really appreciate you coming on. It's always been a blast. This is a killer episode. Uh, this will be up pretty soon. Where can people find you? Cafecito Break, uh, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. And thank you for everyone who's been subscribing and supporting our channel. We appreciate you. And God bless all of you. And thank you, Nino, for having me on again. It's, it's always a fun time. You got it. All right. Probably next week, folks, we'll do another one. Another one. All right, folks, give a give a Rosangel a capacity to break a follow. Later.